If you've ever built a custom car audio system, you know that it can be extremely frustrating to build something that doesn't quite fit. Sketching out an initial idea is a great way to avoid issues and plan for something like a custom subwoofer enclosure. But in today's day and age, why sketch something on paper when we can use technology? I'm currently working on building a full car audio system and need to make a subwoofer enclosure for two 12s, but also designed for mounting an amplifier and other gear. In this video, we're going to use technology and go through the process of coming up with an initial design. Before we get started, a quick shout out to our show sponsor, Crutchfield. When it comes to selecting car audio, home audio, and other electronic gear, Crutchfield has been my go-to source for a long time, long before I ever started the channel. Their website makes it easy to determine exactly what fits and works in your vehicle, and their US-based customer service team is, in my opinion, one of the best in the industry. At the time of release of this video, they are running a Cyber Week event that you guys should check out. But don't forget, if you love savings, they've been cool enough to hook up our community with a special additional offer. You guys can learn more about that at the details down in the video description. So to kick this process off, we of course need our data for the space that we have to actually build our enclosure within. Now in my case here, in a previous video, I used a 3D scanner to capture this design data that you see here on screen. Now with that said, keep in mind that it's not a requirement that you have a 3D scanner in order to be able to design an enclosure in 3D. In fact, we could do something as simple as this, just getting some simple dimensions of the overall space for the enclosure before we begin. Even though I have the 3D scan data, I still took the time to take these dimensions in my case here, just so that I can make sure that my scan data is properly scaled. So I used my 3D scanner to get a scan and I refined the mesh to a smaller model size and I was able to bring it in to the program here that we're designing in, which is Autodesk Fusion 360. And let's do a quick test measurement. I know that that value there between those two areas should be about 40 inches, which is a value that I measured in real life. So our scaling is good to go here. So the next step is to make a new component. In this case, we're gonna call it our enclosure shell and we wanna activate that component. My goal with the design of this component is to create the overall shell for the subwoofer enclosure. So you can see that the first sketch I've created captures an overall envelope size that we can fit within that we're not going to run into these archways up in the top or corners of the enclosure. With the design of this envelope in place, we're going to extrude the first piece of our enclosure. And in this case, this is going to be the back piece of the subwoofer box. From here, I define the next sketch, which is going to create the top and bottom of the enclosure but also the sides on each side there and these top corner pieces that are going to completely surround this subwoofer's airspace. And you'll also notice that in the middle here, I've added provisions for a divider, which is going to divide the two different air chambers and add structural rigidity as a brace. With that sketch defined and everything constrained, I can start extruding each of these pieces. So I first extruded the bottom piece, followed by the left side there and the right side, and you'll notice that these pieces have angle cuts on them to match up with the next piece, the top left corner, the top right corner, the top of the enclosure, and that internal divider. Whenever you're designing in 3D, it's a good idea to name everything so you can see that I've named all of the pieces here. Now, of course, when we're designing a subwoofer enclosure, we want to target a particular internal air volume. In this case, we're designing a sealed enclosure. For a sealed 12 TW3, JL Audio recommends a net internal air volume, so that's after all displacements of one cubic feet. If we look at the spec sheet here, we can see that the driver displacement for this subwoofer is 0 0.029 cubic feet, so we're going to need a total internal airspace of 1.029 cubic feet. This is where the benefit of a parametric 3D modeling program will really shine through in an advanced program like using Fusion 360. When I first started modeling this enclosure, I originally extruded this bottom board to be 12 inches from this surface here to this surface. The problem though is when I extruded this extrusion here, which I'm using to calculate my volume, I found that the enclosed volume of this space ended up being 2,646 cubic inches. This is higher than our target. Our target is actually 1,778 cubic inches. So let's make a change here. Let's go back to that original extrusion that the rest of everything is based upon. And instead of 12 inches, let's change this to eight inches 
And now let's check our volume calculation. In this case, we now have 1,764 cubic inches. Let's add just a small amount. We'll add a 16th of an inch there and check this again. Perfect, 1,778 cubic inches. We have an exact internal air volume that we can use on each subwoofer. Now that volume calculate body that I modeled there, I don't want that to always be there, so I'm just going to hide it from the model. From here, I can proceed to creating another sketch. In this case, the sketch is going to define where the subwoofers are actually located. If we take a look at this sketch, you can see that I modeled, of course, the cutout hole dimension for the subwoofer. We got this from the JL Audio specs. And then just to make sure that I have enough clearance around the subwoofer, I modeled the outside dimension. Now, in this case, I'm only going to be doing a single baffle thickness, and that's just to save overall space within the trunk of the vehicle. The amount of power that we're running on this enclosure and the fact that it has a nice substantial brace divider in the middle of the enclosure means that we're gonna be just fine with single baffling this. So here, I added that baffle board. Now, this is by no means a requirement, but just for some cosmetic appeal, during the modeling process here. I did add what Fusion calls a decal, and I just grabbed these images off of the JL Audio website. Super cool that they have an image that is straight on of the subwoofer, so it allows me to do this easily and model this. But there you can see we've got the two 12TW3s mocked up there on our enclosure. Now again, we of course did take our initial dimensions in the vehicle, but it's super nice having a 3D scan. The fact that I can kind of look around the outside of the enclosure here and make sure that we're not having any interferences with the surfaces in the enclosure trunk itself. Obviously we could get a little bit tighter up to these surfaces if we wanted to. We could also make the enclosure more complex in order to tuck into these nooks and crannies. But my goal was to have the enclosure be right around this area here. So it ended up working out nicely. And as we're going to see right here, we do have some additional space behind the enclosure. And this is key because this is where we plan on mounting the amplifier processor and all of the wire distribution. So let's talk about the design of those components next. I'm going to hide our 3D scan data for the time being. But the first thing I added here was another sketch and I added a new component, which let's see if you can see it there. You can, it's called the amp rack. The first sketch I made on this amp rack was all of these different pads here. These are basically a spacer pad, if you will, that will allow me to have some distance between the backside of the enclosure and the amp rack mounting plate, which will be made out of plastic that will bolt in all of these locations. The reason I like having these spacers, which you can see I've named over here, spacers, and I could hide them all if I want to. They're conveniently grouped in a group there. The reason I added those is one, I'll be able to isolate the amplifier rack mounting board from the enclosure and also to give myself some space between the amplifier rack and the enclosure itself. That will allow some room for wires if I need to come through the back side of the panel or also some room for the heads of the zip ties if we do use zip ties to secure all of the wiring and different components to that board. Again here, I wanna point out a benefit of parametric 3D modeling. So when I created the sketch for all of those mounting pads, you can see that there's a ton of different constraints going on here. And what I did is I initially modeled this square, this square, and this square, and I used a mirror line and some symmetry functionality in order to mirror all of those squares over to the other side. That way, whatever changes I make to this side, instead of having to do double the work and also make those changes to this side, it will automatically update. And I can actually simulate that for you because I have a bunch of equals constraints everywhere on all of these different squares. All of these squares are always going to be equal to each other because of how I've defined the parameters. So check this out. Let's say that I decided that two inch landing squares weren't quite large enough. Let's say I wanna go with a larger size. Let's see what three inches looks like. I can update that one parameter there and you guys can see that all the other parameters in my sketch update. Let's say I wanted to go smaller and only go an inch square. We can get an idea what that looks for really quickly. And if we finish the sketch, you can see that this even updates in our next step, which is all the extrusions based on that sketch. In my case, I like that two inch size. So I'm gonna leave it as that and finish our sketch. And I extruded those a half inch out because I'm gonna be using half inch materials 
in order to add those spacers. Next, I needed to define the overall shape of the plastic piece that's going to be mounted to all these pads and going to have the amplifiers mounted to it. So I created a sketch for that. The shape of that is very simple. It's just the overall size of the enclosure. I know that I have clearance for the overall enclosure and this gives me lots of area to work with when I go to mount all the different components. So I might as well have it be the full size there and we'll extrude that. And I extruded that at a quarter inch because the plastic we're using is a quarter inch thick. Time to add another sketch to that. And in this case, I'm just laying out where I intend to have the VX1000 slash 5i 5 channel amplifier. Again, JL Audio does a really good job of providing dimensions for their different gear. So in this case, I was able to just easily draw this up and have a mock up here. And you can see that I spaced it an inch and a half away from the top of the board here. I could probably reduce that dimension if need be, but I think I'm gonna have more than enough room. I can always change that later. Honestly, the main reason reason that I'm doing this right now is I want to get a feel for making sure that I have enough room for the amplifier rack on the back side of the enclosure here. So I extruded that profile 54 millimeters, which is the height, if you will, of the amplifier. And I again added a decal there just to kind of give it some cosmetic appeal. But let's unhide our scan data. And if we do our section analysis again, you can see what kind of clearance we have between the back side of our rear seat and the amplifier right there. So we're gonna have plenty of room for all of our amplifier rack wiring and anything else that we need to add into this space. Again, if we were extremely concerned about saving every last little bit of space, we could obviously angle the backside of this enclosure and angle the amplifier rack and you could get a better feel for how close you were in here. But I rather have this additional airspace, if you will, which will allow for proper cooling of all the gear. And it will also just make wiring of everything a lot more simple having this nice large chamber behind here. So with that, we now have a fully modeled sealed enclosure that is perfectly sized for the exact target air volume that we're looking for. We've also made sure that this enclosure isn't going to hit anywhere in the trunk. We know that there's going to be plenty of room for the amplifier rack and the other components on the back side of the enclosure. So the next step is we want to design a custom beauty panel that is going to mount onto this baffle board. And we want to figure out how it's going to mount, how everything is going to come apart for serviceability how it's going to actually look for the cosmetic appeal. Lots of different details to plan here. And I wanna start this part of the process by actually hand sketching some different ideas. So a good way to do this is instead of using the perspective view, I'm gonna use an orthographic view, which means I can look at surfaces straight on. So I'm gonna to switch to my back view here. And I'm going to take a screenshot of this image right here that I can then print a little something like this. I know that it's hard to see and that's because I intentionally reduced this so that it's just barely kind of like a ghost image. That way I can easily sketch on this and come up with some different ideas. To see all steps of this project, be sure to check out the related videos here on the channel. And if you're new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Also, if you're looking for savings on your next car audio, home audio, or electronics gear purchase, be sure to check out our show sponsor, Crutch field at the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Juan, Jerry, Steven, and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And thank you for tuning in and watching.